During the filming of Tea with Five, a silver screen actress, Faye Dunaway, was fired because she was allegedly throwing things at crew members and even slapping some people. Despite being a talented actress, she was said to be one of the 50s stars that people found annoying due to her attitude and the way she treated others. Some say that she may have been the most annoying actress of her time. However, several other 50s actresses were also said to be annoying for different reasons, some because of their diva personalities and some because of their on-screen screen images. Today, we're delving into the glamorous world of Hollywood's golden age as we explore the intriguing question. Who was the most annoying actress of the 1950s? Faye Dunaway. She threw something at me because I ad-libbed a line. She was just so rude. If Bette Davis can be nice to people, Faye Dunaway ought to be buying them limousines as presents. This was what James Woods had to say as he recalled his experience with the actress while they worked together in the 1976 TV movie The Disappearance of Amy Faye Dunaway had a reputation of being extremely difficult to work with, but even beyond work, it was said that she treated people badly. Even though she was applauded for her performances in films like Bonnie and Clyde and Chinatown, most people didn't have good things to say about her attitude off screen. There were several accounts of her being rude to cast and crew members. She was also said to arrive on sets late, often in a foul mood and ready to yell at anyone who pissed her off. Things got so bad that even her neighbors in West Hollywood noticed. A former neighbor of hers revealed that the actress had a distinctive quirk in her parking habits. Instead of adhering to traditional parking spaces, the actress would occasionally park her Volvo station wagon or Mercedes SL in other people's driveways, or even block driveways, causing a ripple of frustration among those living nearby. Although she worked hard to build a successful career, her attitude threatened her progress and influenced the way she was perceived. Received, Debbie Reynolds. All through the 50s and 60s, Debbie Reynolds entertained audiences with her bright and energetic roles. However, some of the very traits that made her famous were the same traits that some found annoying and excessive. Debbie Reynolds got famous in 1952 when she appeared alongside Donald O'Connor and Gene Kelly in the musical film Singin' in the Rain. The actress and singer who was known for her vibrant personality and vivacious stage presence charmed her way into the hearts of people in the 50s. In Tammy and The Bachelor, Mother, and even her very own sitcom, The Debbie Reynolds Show. She also had several hit songs like Tammy, but even though there was an influx of love from several fans who adored her, some people thought she was excessive. Some critics found her over-bubbly personality exhausting, annoying, and even irritating. But their opinions didn't change the fact that she was a successful star during her time. Joan Crawford Joan Crawford was a woman who was hell-bent on succeeding during Hollywood's golden age, and absolutely nothing could stop her. Her determination certainly took her far in the industry, but a time came when people were beginning to have a problem with the actress's roles and her behavior as well. Some of her roles were said to be overly dramatic, and she was also said to have a diva personality in real life. All through her career, Joan pushed for roles that allowed her to stand out in her industry. The last thing she wanted to be was just another bombshell, so she auditioned for versatile roles. Just like her role in the film Mildred Pierce, she often took on characters that represented bold, audacious, and independent women. But while this actress was garnering fans through her roles, it was alleged that she was not so lovable behind closed doors. Aside from her adoptive daughter's allegations of her being emotionally abusive, some people claimed that she was a difficult person who wanted everyone to obey her wishes. No one knows for sure if these allegations are true, but there were people who thought the actress was a annoying both on-screen and off-screens. Joan Fontaine Joan Fontaine was an English-American actress known for her roles in several classic films. Fontaine had a reputation for being demanding and particular about her performances. She was known to challenge directors and producers and was meticulous about her character portrayals. Her dedication to her craft sometimes came across as difficult or rude to those she worked with. Her intense commitment to her roles and her desire for perfection could occasionally create tensions on the set. Tallulah Bankhead The silver screen icon was a flamboyant and outspoken actress known for her distinctive voice and larger-than-life personality. She often disregarded societal norms and conventions, which earned her a reputation for being rude and audacious. She was unapologetically frank and had a sharp wit that could sometimes appear extreme. Her daring and irreverent behavior, combined with her unfiltered remarks, led to her being seen as rude by some. Olivia de Havilland Olivia de Havilland was a high 
highly respected actress known for her grace and poise. However, she also had a reputation for being somewhat aloof and distant. De Havilland was fiercely independent and took her career seriously. She had a strong sense of professionalism and high standards, which sometimes created friction with her co-stars and directors. While she was not intentionally rude, her reserved nature and dedication to her craft occasionally led to misunderstandings and perceptions of aloofness. Judy Holiday, With a distinct comedic style and impeccable acting skills, Judy Holiday set out to entertain a generation of viewers. Little did she know that some people would find her mannerisms grating and annoying. Judy Holiday, the illustrious actress celebrated for her unforgettable performances in cinematic gems like Born Yesterday and Bells Are Ringing, possessed a mesmerizing allure that sparked both fervent admiration and heated debate. With an enchanting blend of talent and charisma, she unfurled her comedic prowess with an idiosyncratic flair that left audiences captivated. Countless viewers were left spellbound by Holiday's impeccable comedic timing, effortlessly delivering punchlines with precision and nuance. Her portrayals of endearing characters were nothing short of remarkable, as she breathed life into each role, infusing them with a genuine charm that resonated deeply with the audience. However, some viewers found her high-pitched voice and exaggerated mannerisms grating or annoying. To them, these flamboyant expressions bordered on the edge of annoyance, clouding their ability to fully appreciate the depth of her artistry. Martha Heyer The 50s actress was often chosen to portray characters that were cold and detached, and while she was good at embodying such roles, some people found her icy and aloof demeanor off-putting and annoying. The actress launched her career in the 1940s with a minor role in the 1946 film The Locket, and her career grew steadily as time went by. With each passing year, she kept on amassing fame and gaining a reputation for her beauty and her versatile roles. She later got opportunities to act as the leading lady in various genres, but her role in Something Came Running was said to be her best. Although she was loved and admired by several people, some people found her detached performances annoying. The actress was clearly just doing her job, but not everyone was a big fan. It is important to recognize that the perceptions of actresses from that time as annoying or misunderstood were often influenced by the societal and industry norms of the era. In the 1950s, Hollywood operated under a carefully constructed studio system that tightly controlled the public images of actors and actresses. These stars were often portrayed as glamorous and perfect, with little room for deviation from the carefully crafted personas. Behind the scenes, however, these actresses were complex individuals navigating the challenges of fame, personal lives, and the demands of their profession. Also, the public's perception of these actresses was often shaped by limited information and media coverage. In the 1950s, there were no social media platforms or the constant stream of celebrity news like we have today. People relied on magazines, interviews, and carefully curated public appearances to form their opinions about these actresses. This limited access to their personal lives and thoughts meant that their true personalities and intentions were not always accurately portrayed. The golden age of television was both a rewarding and trying time for actors. Check out some unusual things that movie stars had to endure during this period.